Senator, nice to see you. Good morning. Good morning. You know Washington. You know the role of oversight that Congress has. Can you explain any reason why Chairman Nunes would have done what he did yesterday? Say, I've seen reports from the intelligence community on this subject, and instead of discussing those reports with members of his own intelligence committee and the ranking Democratic member, go right to the press and right to the White House. No, I have not seen anything like that, and I'm happy to say that uh, in the Senate Intelligence Committee, there's a very good working relationship between Senator Burr and Senator Warner. And no, I have not seen anything like it, and uh, it's very disturbing. You, you heard what Adam Schiff said. He said the chairman will need to decide whether he's the chairman of an independent investigation into conduct or he's going to be a surrogate to the White House because he cannot do both. Has Chairman Nunes so damaged the credibility of the Intelligence Committee that they should just shut down that investigation? Uh, Matt, I can't, I can't make that decision. That, that's up to the leadership of the, of the House. It's up to the House of Representatives. I can say that uh, there are so many moving parts here, including the latest news this morning, that supposedly there was coordination between the Trump campaign and the Russians, for which I've seen no substantiation. But it continues on and on and on that that's the reason why we need a select committee to clear this whole issue up. And by the way, intelligence committees and armed services committees always work in a bipartisan fashion. Mm. And I'm sorry to see what's happened over there. Senator, the president said, as you just saw, that he felt somewhat vindicated by this information that he received yesterday. But let's back up a minute. The claim that Trump made was that then President Obama surveilled him some way before the election at Trump Tower. What we appear to have learned yesterday is that they, the Trump or his associates were somehow incidentally caught up in surveillance after the election, surveillance that was of other legal foreign targets. So I ask you, should he feel vindicated? Is that accusation of wiretapping by President Obama vindicated? Uh, I, I think the president obviously can express his views and emotions, but the, nothing has changed since the director of the, of the FBI said that there was no evidence that Trump Towers had been, quote, wiretapped. So this and change is nothing? That has not been refuted. And that had not been refuted by anyone. This uh, new story, that, as you mentioned, uh, apparently has to do with post-election things that happened. Uh, but the, I don't see where the director of the FBI's testimony has changed the facts uh, in the slightest way. This story of Russia and possible connections to Trump associates during the campaign, you just alluded to this a second ago. About a week ago, you said this. There's a lot of aspects with this whole relationship with Russia and Vladimir Putin that requires further scrutiny. You went on to say, in fact, I think there's a lot of shoes to drop from this centipede. D do you think that when all of those shoes drop that they may mortally wound this young administration? I have no idea because I don't know what uh, those shoes are, but I've been around this town long enough to know when there's something of these consequences and this enormity, there's always additional information that comes out before it's concluded. And I'm con and we're already seeing that, by the way, this morning with the quote allegations that there was coordination between the Trump campaign and the Russians. And uh, I've seen them before, Matt, and so he, there's more to come. What, and Congressman Adam Schiff, who's the Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, has now said to NBC that there is more more than circumstantial evidence of some kind of collusion between Trump campaign associates and Russia. Have you seen that evidence? Are you aware of it? Do you doubt it? Uh, I'm not aware of it. Uh, I do know that, for example, in the Republican convention, uh, there was to be included a provision that called for the provision of defensive lethal weapons to Ukraine. Somehow that disappeared. I'm still curious about how that happened. There's lots of those things going on. Let me just ask you, before I let you go, Senator, about health care. I know it's happening down the hall from you, but it's going to be a tight vote tonight. A, what's your prediction? Will it pass? And B, if it doesn't pass, how badly does that damage the president's ability to pass other aspects of his agenda? 
I don't know if it's going to pass or not, Matt. Uh, your information is as good as uh, mine. Uh, I do know that there's questions from members from states like mine that expanded Medicaid where uh, the bill, as I've seen it, and they say there are changes taking place all the time, uh, would uh, have a significant impact on my state of Arizona. So uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I do know this, that Obamacare as it is, is imploding and uh, it's, it's not working in Arizona where uh, premiums are going up over 100%. So we've got to do something. Yeah, but is this the bill to replace it? I don't know because I'm, all of us should wait till it gets over here, if it gets over here. And we have an amending process and we have a parliamentary procedures where we will enact changes that we think are necessary. All right, Senator John McCain. Senator, I know how much you love these early hours, so I really appreciate you getting up and joining us this morning. Good to be with you.